everyone. Welcome to 6.5 on the Road. Lisa Martin here, your host with Dave Nicholson. We're coming to you from Dell Technologies World 2024 at the Venetian Expo in Las Vegas. Things kicked off the other day to literally thunderous applause when Michael Dell and his cast of legends came on stage. Tens of thousands of people here. We're going to be having great conversations all day today and tomorrow. And Dave, I'm super excited to dig into what's going on with Power Edge, lots of news in the last 24 hours. Let's get at it. All right, our guest is Justin Van Holtz, Power Edge Portfolio Manager. Justin, great to have you. Oh, thank you for having me. Let's break some news. What are some of the latest Power Edge servers and enhancements that Dell is announcing here? So we had uh, just announced our R670 and R770 CSP edition products. It's the latest lineup of servers from Dell. Uh, this is targeted for our CSP customers and it's our exciting new offering that we have in the market. It'll eventually be opened up to all customer base, but we're really excited to have this offer in, for our customer sets. Talk a little bit about some of the enhancements that Dell has made here and the, the what's in it for me as a customer. Yeah, absolutely. So from a, from a product offer perspective, we have a couple key technologies that we're including in these new products. First and foremost, they are built off of DCMHS technology. It's a new OCP standard. We have additional capabilities such as front IO, cold IO support, which enables customers to get the maximum advantage out of their hot IO, cold IO contained environments, as well as industry standard firmware. It gives our customers the ability to overall lower operational cost. So when you say CSP, usually we think cloud service provider. You're which absolutely is what correct. The, what yes. the TLA stands for. Yes. But are there um, customers that might be building things in their on-premises data centers that would qualify as essentially a CSP internally? Are these products sure. designed to work in those environments as well? The first release, the, the product as absolutely is designed to eventually go into those environments. The very first release that we have into the marketplace is going to be targeted towards those CSP use cases, those cloud service provider use cases. But as we move forward in time, we're going to be able to open up these products to a wider, wider sub, uh, segment of our customer base. And are you, what, what do the configurations look like? Um, you haven't said the letters AI together 10 times in a row <laughs> yet. Yes. So it sounds like you might be one of the adults in the room who recognizes that there are workloads other than AI that, sure. that, are, that are going to be performed by these cloud service a providers. A absolutely. And when you take a look at this offer, this is a mainstream offer. It is kind of the workhorse of the portfolio. And when we take a look at what types of AI workloads or accelerated workloads will go on these products, they are more of your general purpose, general purpose uh, acceleration with GPUs and other accelerators. But the main core of our acceleration portfolio is going to be you know, our AI product offers. And that's, that's where you know, the focus is going to be. If a customer is really looking for a dedicated a AI type solution, you end up in an XC type of product. This is built for customers that are looking to maybe distribute AI throughout an enterprise. Uh, perhaps it's an edge AI type application for inferencing, but it's not, you know, you're not, you're not really going to build a, an entire you know, generative AI cluster on these offers. That's not what we're targeting with this So then product. what would you kind of unpack some of the key use cases? Like one of the ones that comes to mind here is like real-time processing? I would say uh, from a workload perspective, for this release, we're targeting what we're seeing out of the CSPs, which would be microservices, multi-tenant virtualization, anything where you have maybe distributed database analytics, something that's going to scale with a, a cloud service provider customer's internal infrastructure. Uh, you know, this product is well suited for a broad range of general purpose workloads, all the way from, you know, HPC applications all the way down to, uh, you know, microservice type deployments. But when we take a look at these specific configurations in the July timeframe, it's really going to be targeted towards those cloud service provider apps. And what about environments as we look at um, Formula One, for example, which Dave and I are big fans of, the environments can be incredibly harsh. Mm -hmm. Is this... Uh, a ruggedized type application? Yes. No, it's, this is traditional data center, so it's, it's targeted towards you know, traditional 19-inch rack environments, data center deployments. Now, it will go into what we're calling edge of data center deployments. So if you have a retailer that's looking to deploy maybe a video solution inside their on-store premise, 
these types of products would fit in there if they have a somewhat controlled environment inside their, their edge locations. But, but hypothetically, hypothetically speaking, if a customer were, if they really, really wanted to have their servers be papaya orange, like the McLaren <laughs> Dell, I'm, I'm, Dell, I'm sure, Dell I'm sure they, one team. I'm sure they could talk to the OEM group and they, <laughs> could, they could, could make work something happen. to happen. A little bespoke okay. server action that was, there. That was really the most serious question that I had <laughs> for the day. But no, seriously, uh, we've been talking to a lot of people about the constraints, not only around AI, but around all IT yes. moving forward. Uh, one of those is clearly power. Yes. People say power and cooling. It's really the same thing, right? Yes. Um, what, ha you know, are you doing anything to address efficiency? Yeah, absolutely. When we when we we actually had a you know set of conversations with our CSP customers uh, over the past year and a half, two years, and trying to draw out what are the problem areas that they're facing. Power and cooling rose to the top of the list, pretty much almost every single conversation. And it's not only um, a question of hey, can I get more power into the rack? Can I deploy more IT? There, there are certain areas of the uh, deployment where it is, hey, I'm out of cooling or I'm out of power to the rack. How can I get more within the cap that I've set or I have in my data center so I don't have to deploy or build a new data center environment? So with the, the new R670 and 770 CSP edition, we've been partnering closely with Intel releasing uh, on the Xeon 6 E-Core family of processors. So this is a new efficiency core based offer, really targeted for uh, efficiency from a power perspective and a uh, overall throughput perspective. So really excited to partner, have this partnership with Intel to release this new offer that is really targeted for that efficiency space. So being targeted for efficiency, you know, we talk with a lot of Dell customers over the years who, and we hear so many that have sustainability initiatives within their organizations, and even in RFPs, they say, we can only work with organizations that are gonna help us on our sustainability initiatives. What is that sustainability angle here? From an efficiency perspective, oh, power I mean, consumption. Any, yeah, absolutely. Anytime you have targets for power efficiency within the product stuff, whether it's Ener Energy Star certifications, titanium power supplies, you know the the reusability or recyclability of the content of the product itself, all of this is is really driven towards sustainability goals. And uh, we we view this as an asset for Dell and specifically for these product offers themselves. We really feel that that this is you know on a pathway to giving customers the ability to drive more workload at consistent power utilization levels. Really excited about the product. So ROI, TCO, this is the leading edge in terms of offerings from Dell in that regard. Whereas a call it a private user in their on-premises data center might say, eh, we're okay with the last gen stuff for a while when you're reselling everything that you do, these numbers become important. Is the math adding up? That's my question oh, for you. Yeah. Does mean, the math look good for, for because, because yes. you can build amazing systems that can do amazing things. Yes. But if you're gonna ask me for a dollar 10 instead of a dollar, right. you better be giving me a dollar 50 worth of value. Is the math sure. adding up? Sure, oh, absolutely. When we okay. take a look at this offer, you know, 2.3, I think, is uh, what, we, what we're delivering in terms of the, the amount of performance per versus the last generation. So okay. Okay. it's a pretty dramatic uplift when you take a look at generation over generation. And then if you're a customer that's potentially coming from an older generation product, maybe you've purchased back in 2019 or 2018 and you're looking to upgrade, the dramatic improvements in both overall performance as well as power efficiency levels allows you to consolidate a lot more workload onto a fewer number of servers versus just kind of maintaining a older base of systems. So it sounds sort of foundational to me in terms of helping organizations to modernize their data centers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is the core in the Power Edge offer. It is kind of the, the, the baseline for what we're going to be bringing to market over the next year or so. And from, a, from an offer perspective, as customers are evaluating their new workload needs yeah. or transitioning from where they are today to go into the future, an R670 or 770 CSP edition, specifically in that CSP space, yes, this is going to be, this is going to be one of those foundational offers that should provide kind of the, the roots of your data center infrastructure. And deliveries start 
When? We're, we're targeting July for okay. first deliveries, and then we'll have ongoing releases with new content uh, as the year goes on. In this space, what do you see as the constraints or the bottlenecks that need to be overcome as we move forward? I mean, we've got, so, sure. so I'm assuming this is PCIe Gen 5 yep, technology. Yep, absolutely. Um, what does that look like? What's, what's um, I, you know, it's not what's keeping you up at night, but when you think in terms of, wow, it's gonna be great when we can fix this part of the puzzle. Sure, so when we take a look at some of the, uh, the workload problems, or I, I shouldn't say problems, challenges, I would say, as we're moving forward in time as an industry, when we take a look at it from an industry level, uh, there are a couple key things that are standing out as inhibitors to adopting new technology. One is just the proliferation of technology that is coming from all sources, whether it's different CPU types or uh, IO technologies or storage technologies, how do you actually manage that and deliver a solution to a customer? Uh, that's where technologies such as DCMHS come into play because you're standardizing the server components and making everything modular. So now as you go forward in time, it becomes a lot easier to, you know, in a more agile fashion, take new technology that's being delivered, integrate it into your offering, and get it into your customer base. It allows our customers to absorb new technology faster because you're making very minor changes in the product to get new technology into their hands. And you're also giving them a much bigger scope of technology to choose from uh, because you're basing on standardization. Uh, the other that is definitely top of mind for a lot of customers is power utilization. Yeah. And we see that power utilization from the, the suppliers um, is continuing to go up because they're wanting to do more work. They're wanting to get more workload into, into our systems. That does provide challenges for our customers that may have designed their data center infrastructure, uh, you know, potentially five, 10, 15 years ago. And now you're running into situations where, hey, I may need to deliver liquid cooling into the rack. I may need to deliver, you know, more more efficient uh, hot aisle, cold aisle contained environments and those types of technologies. And so when we see these trends that are occurring, mm -hmm. it's how do you consume that for, you know, inside Dell and then how do you deliver a solution to your customers that are easy to consume, that can actually integrate easily with either their brownfield infrastructure or if they need to upgrade, how do you make it sure that they're designing the next data center and they're spending their money wisely for technologies that are going to be sustained throughout the decades. Right. What are some of the things that you've heard since the news broke, um, some of the feedback from around the floor here at Dell Technologies World? Oh, a lot of good buzz. I, you know, AI is definitely everywhere. Yes. And it, it is definitely the, the, uh, the hot ticket. And we got a lot of customers that are asking about that. We have a lot of customers that are asking about new technologies such as CXL. So there's a lot of new technologies that are coming in this year and next year that are really driving, um, I'll say, conversations. Customers are really interested about acceleration and putting acceleration in different spots, whether it's generative AI or just some basic machine learning. How do they accelerate those type of capabilities within their data center? How do they accelerate those capabilities at the edge? So that, I mean, without a doubt, is one of the top questions that we're getting as we're you know, having conversations in the booth and in our meeting places. Well, one of the things that Michael Dell said yesterday on stage is we have big ears. Yes. And I know that that very well about Dell Technologies and its dedication to really listening to the customers, taking in their feedback, working with them on the advancements and the innovations. So that's that's great to hear that, that the feedback has been good, not that I'm surprised at all. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and it's, it's more than just uh, having those conversations, taking their feedback, and then producing products that align to what they need. It's also then how do you drive that as standardization within the industry? You know, Dell participating in different standards bodies, making sure that uh, you know the innovations are available to to a broader audience. Uh, it helps Dell, it helps the industry. You know, it helps everybody. So it's you know, in some some respects, that that whole kind of drive towards uh, listening to your customer is sometimes a little bit broader than Dell, and uh, we're oh, happy to participate. Yeah, well, the ecosystem is incredibly strong. We saw that on stage yesterday. So great to hear what you guys are doing yeah. there. And, and that's this really very symbiotic uh, relationship that we're hearing. Justin, thank you so much for coming on the program and sharing Absolutely. with us what's new with PowerEdge and congrats on all the great work. Thank you very much. Thank all you right. for the time. Our pleasure.
For our guest and for Dave Nicholson, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching 6-5 on the road from Dell Technologies World 2024 from Vegas. Stick around, more great content coming up next.